Here is Elliot Kipchoge finishing the London 2019 Marathon, an exceptional performance on the day. But let's take a quick rewind back to a few weeks before the competition. During these last few weeks of training, elite and recreational athletes often do what is called a taper. Tapering is a planned reduction in training before a competition to improve performance by helping an athlete recover from training fatigue while maintaining fitness levels. Any endurance athlete can apply a taper to their training. However, many have considered the taper as an art, as you need to get it right in order to see the performance benefits. Tapering too much can lead to detraining due to a lack of training stimulus, whilst tapering too little can lead to overaccumulation of training fatigue or failure to recover from training fatigue, both of which can reduce performance. However, Tapering just right can lead to performance benefits of approximately 2% on average, ranging up to 8% in some individuals. There appears to be a Goldilocks zone where just the right amount of tapering and in the right way can bring about these performance benefits. Athletes, coaches and scientists have been at it for years trying to find the quote-unquote optimal taper strategy. In today's video, we are looking at the Hallmark Review paper published in 2007, where a group of scientists reviewed and analysed the tapering studies to date to find out whether there are any patterns in the data to understand whether there is a most effective tapering strategy and what it involves. To understand what we mean by reducing training, we need to look at three key variables relating to training and how they can be manipulated. The first is training volume, which is how much training you are doing. You can measure this as distance covered or duration of exercise. For example, a good level runner may increase their training volume over the period of three weeks and it may look something like this. So training volume is how much training someone is doing. The next variable is training intensity, which is how hard the training is. You can view training intensity as a scale from 0% to 100%. 0% would be resting, such as at sleep or quiet sitting, whilst 100% intensity would be considered maximal effort, such as a maximal sprint. A typical measure, such as heart rate, is often used to gauge training intensity for endurance athletes and often express it as a percentage of heart rate maximum. There are also other ways you can measure training intensity, such as blood lactate or rating of perceived exertion. So training intensity is how hard the training is. And this is often used on a session by session basis. The last variable is training frequency, which you can measure simply by counting how many training sessions you do per week. As an example, you might have a three week training program where on week one, you train five times a week, week two, you train four times a week, and week three, you train six times a week. So training frequency is simply how many training sessions you do per week. And one last thing we need to consider for tapering is when to begin the taper. And this is often measured as days or weeks before the start of the competition. For example, should we start the taper three weeks, two weeks, five weeks before the competition? When do we begin the taper? If we take a look at the findings of the 2007 meta-analysis, we can begin to understand what the most effective tapering strategy looks like. Their findings indicated that the start of the taper should be approximately two weeks before the competition, and they actually compared this to one week, three weeks and four weeks before the competition and found indeed two weeks had the highest overall effect size and the 95% confidence intervals did not overlap zero which means that pretty much everyone experienced a performance benefit when the taper was employed two weeks before the competition. They also found that reducing training volume between 41 to 60% was the most effective and indeed they compared this against several other training volume categories. As you can see, reducing training volume by 41 to 60% was superior to either reducing more than this or less than this. 
Again, the 95% confidence intervals were above the zero effect size level, meaning that most people saw performance improvements. For training intensity, they noted that this is an important driver for maintaining training adaptations and also preventing detraining. And in fact, they found that those that maintained their training intensity were more likely to see a performance improvement. Therefore, it's recommended that training intensity should be maintained and not reduced or increased during the taper phase. And this was similar for training frequency, where they found those that maintained training frequencies saw better improvements compared to those that decreased them. However, they also noted on a more practical sense, in order to reduce training volume, you might be able to reduce training frequency a little bit, but they recommended compared to your normal training frequency, not to drop it more than 20%. So keep it within 80% of your normal pre-taper training frequency. For example, five or six times a week. Now I just want to go back to the reduction in training volume because there's a little bit more to it for those advanced athletes because they recommend reducing it in an exponential way. There are several ways you can reduce training volume and the seminal papers discussing this highlight several methods. The most common methods described are a linear reduction in training volume. You've also got a stepwise reduction in training volume where there's a sudden decrease to your desired amount. But there are also exponential reductions in training volume which can also have different decay rates such as a fast or slow exponential decay. Now this figure shows it a little bit more clearly but as you can see there are different ways you can reduce the amount of training you do. Now the 2007 review didn't have enough evidence to indicate which of these four different tapering methods was the best but with the evidence they did have they suggested that those that progressively decline in training volumes such as the linear or exponential reductions was superior to the stepwise reduction. Now the improvement in performance due to tapering is actually quite small and they state that for a recreational athlete this might actually be quite trivial. However, for high level athletes such as elite level athletes might make the difference between making the podium or not. The take home message and practical consideration of this review is that according to their analysis, a two week taper before the competition where training volume is exponentially decreased by 41 to 60% whilst maintaining training intensity and frequency appears to be the most effective tapering strategy out there. But they do highlight that this might be a generic tapering strategy as they did review multiple sports such as rowing, cycling and running. We must also recognize that there is individual variability which means that some individuals will respond much better to a given tapering strategy than others. We must also not dismiss the fact that there are probably tapering strategies that might be more effective However, we just haven't explored them yet in the scientific evidence, or no one's actually thought of them yet. We should keep an open mind about these ideas because there might be even better ways to improve performance before the competition using some kind of taper. And we must also not forget that this review was published in 2007. We're now at 2021 and indeed there has likely been lots of scientific development and evidence relating to effective tapering in the endurance evidence base, which is why I'm intending to make more videos relating to tapering. But for now we have reviewed the hallmark paper or the review relating to most effective tapering strategy in 2007 and this is a paper used by so many coaches and athletes so I hope it's been interesting to you and you can take something away from this video.